Go. Okay, that's ready to go. We're at the Elks Club in Las Cruces. Yeah. We got the end spot, which is the best spot, we think. And that's the Elks. There's a back door. You can go to the bar if you have a card. And you are an Elks member. But only if you're a member of this lot. Gotta go to the front door if you're Gotta a guest. The front door, otherwise, there's a bell. They let you in. They're nice. Well, we're getting ready to hook up. We're heading to Wilcox, Arizona today. Yep. And that's it. Okay. to a border patrol inspection station. These are not a big deal, but everybody has to stop. You have to watch which lane to go through. You don't want to end up in the truck lane. So all the trucks went off. Some unfortunate campers. A couple of passenger cars and people that didn't pay attention. <laughs> a couple cars. You don't want to be in that lane. We're not a truck. We're not we're a truck. RV. We're an RV. We're a passenger vehicle. So we're going to go through the passenger vehicle line. Good job, Mark. Not Dave. my first rodeo or border patrol for that matter. Yep. I remember when but we... are going to have to put the camera... I'm going to turn this off now. So they just waved us through, said, have a good day. Very easy, no hassles. And what's the important things to remember? Um, take your sunglasses off so they can see your face. Be courteous. Be courteous. And don't film while you're in the station itself. And through any border, any time, for any passport control, don't answer any questions that have not been asked. <laughs> Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, but I've been through mean, I've been through many borders with you. Um, that means don't don't offer any information that they're not asking about. Because you can get yourself in trouble that way. And you should know where you're going and where you came from. Yeah, that's always a tricky one. When you go across the border, they always ask you, where are you staying tonight? And sometimes with the camper we don't know. So we always pick a nearby campground or something to tell them that's where we're staying. So and if they if they ask where you're from, it's not like somebody asking you in a campground. So where are you guys from? I said, well, we're from Orlando because that's easier. Yeah. We're actually from Davenport. Yeah. Which is another small. It's a small town in Florida. But if you say you're from Orlando, they've got your passport and they go. Uh, no, dude. <laughs> That's not what it says here. And then you have to explain. Oh, you know. So it's easier to be accurate and only answer the questions asked. There you go. So, a few tips for you with uh, inspection stations.
Bye-bye. self-leveling jacks. Mark, can you take care of that? Do that for us? Sure. explain what you did? Um, we're in a kind of a, a unlevel spot more than usual so instead of using auto we used manual and just when I held this down to go into manual and then whenever you press the button it's gonna uh, operate those jacks so the front when you press it makes the front jacks go this makes the rear jacks go and this tips the coach left or right and there's a little indicator light on each corner that tells you which way it's out of level. It's really easy to use, as long as it's within parameters. Okay. So, so that's it. Okay. Gears down. Gears down, truck off. We made it to Wilcox. Now it was time to unhook the Jeep from the truck. It's the same as it was with the Pilot. The Jeep's a little bit easier to do than the Pilot was. I'm just disconnecting the airlines and all the uh, the accoutrements that attach the Jeep to the truck. That said something very interesting. We're watching this video. What did you say, Beth? Do you remember about that you never get to... Oh, I never get to see this part because I'm in the driver's seat waiting to move the car either forward or backward for Mark as needed. So I don't see what he's doing. I just see the top of his body. Which is the way I like it. <laughs> I don't want her to see what I'm doing because then she'd figure out how easy it is. And uh, Well, maybe. Maybe I could get Beth to do it instead of me doing it. But I'd rather have her driving... Uh, she knows what she's doing. She gets the Jeep where it's supposed to be. and I just stumble around aimlessly trying more. to move it this way. No, I don't know. Now he's telling me to move it up just a little bit so I can get it unhooked. It's a little nervous for me because I'm like hitting the gas with Mark directly in front of me. I also have my foot near the brake case. A little, little tense, but you do it all the time. Go on, get out of here. And then, uh, then we kind of get everything taken care of put the stuff away stow it if we have to now we can leave the stuff on the jeep the mechanics for uh hooking up the, the the tow bar we can leave that on the jeep or we can take it off it's really pretty easy earlier in the video you saw us putting on the crossbar and the brackets and now here we're gonna we're gonna take them off 
it's just a couple of clips, one on each side. You lift the bar off, that goes in the back seat, trying not to tear up the upholstery. And then the little brackets just turn and pull out. And get the other one. And that's it. It's really, it's really simple to do. It was kind of hard getting everything hooked up. We had to take the whole front end off of the Jeep and get some bolts in some hard places. But it's well worth doing it. We would recommend towing four down at any time. And then it's just a matter of hooking up the, the power and the water. And here at Wilcox, it's all 30 amps. So we use an adapter because we're 50 amp. But it's plenty of power unless you're going to be there in the summer. I'm just plugging it in, turning on the breaker, and then getting the water hooked up. And water isn't something that we have to hook all the time. We have water in our tanks. We have a 100-gallon reservoir in the camper, but we don't keep it full. And if we can get fresh water, we Good. use fresh water when we can, because then we save the water that we need when we're boondocking or looking at cracker barrel. And then getting the slides out, that's, uh, that's pretty easy, too. Uh, you can see we just push the button and out they go. And they're very noisy when they're going out, but it's just how they are. Nothing to, to worry about, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, they just head out. So that's us setting up Wilcox. Yes, I am waiting for the bedroom. So is everybody else. Well, that kind of ruins that whole magic, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Alright, what's next? Slides are out, yep. feet are down. Gotta do the bedroom. Right, That's most of what it takes to set up. Yeah. We we found a spot, yep. we pulled in, we um, put the feet down, we yep. leveled the coach, put the feet down, and then um, hooked up the power, made sure that we had the correct power, mm -hmm. hooked up the water, yep. and then what did put, you do? Put the slides up. That was it. Yeah. So now all the slides are out, the power's hooked up, and we're ready to set up the rest of the stuff that you really don't need to see. <laughs> uh, putting out our coffee cups, putting the coffee maker out, yeah. kind of getting housekeeping set up. Um, we do that every time we stop. Yeah. Because, well, not every time we don't do Cracker barrels. No. But every time we stop, that's what we do. Yep. We set it up. It's not that hard once you do it. It's harder to film it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, that and, was hard. And I think that's been proven. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen that. So, yeah, that's it. We're ready to camp. Yay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. We're heading to Wilcox downtown. We're in Wilcox at the House Club. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna head downtown, take a look around. Yeah. Get a bottle of wine maybe. Yep. Uh, look at the shops. <laughs> take a look at the Rex Allen stuff, see where his horse is buried. Sounds uh, like fun. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a good time. <laughs> Let me give Great. you a look around here. This is the spot we're staying in. Mountains there. Really pretty. It's a little chilly today. I told Mark to shh because I thought I heard a crane. The cranes migrate down here and sometimes you get to see them and hear them. It's one of my favorite things. We have a video about the cranes. Oh, we do. Someplace. Yeah. We went to oh. Texas to see them. Yep. And the camper. And that's the Elks Lodge over there. So let's go to Wilcox. I'll be here waiting. You're waiting? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Are you waiting? I'm waiting. When do they reopen? Closed for the season. Darn it. We don't know. We'll be back. We'll be back. Dairy Queen. Gotta have a Dairy Queen. Waiting. <laughs> oh, wait, I think the light's going on. This was a really cool little antique store in Wilcox. Really nice, a lot of cool stuff in here. Without going into it a lot, it's an antique store. The lady there was really nice, she had a dog with her, and a, a great mix of stuff, a good 10 or 15 minutes you could spend in a store just looking around, maybe an hour. Lady was really nice. We enjoyed it. Just a little tip about something that's happening in Wilcox. As I walked out in the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo. How do you feel about Wilcox? I love Wilcox. I don't know why. It's a, it's a, a nice small town. Every time we come here, people are so friendly and like we belong. You know, there's not a lot of. And you got wine. Welcome to the Rex Allen Cowboy Museum in Wilcox, Arizona. Oh, one day I spied a young cowboy all dressed in white linen. All dressed in white linen. As cold as the clay I see by your outfit that you are a cowboy So, getting rain down These here in Wilcox, but this is one of my favorite spots. That's Rex Allen. Tribute to him. His horse was buried right here at Coco. And hear my sad story. This little town knows how to do it. I was shot and in there's the Beth back over there trying to stay dry. I I must die. Great little town. This is pretty nice. People bought a square, I guess. Yeah. For their community. It's pretty nice. I got this nice mural here. Very Arizona sky colored. Yeah. Courtesy of uh, Union Pacific. Union Pacific, which is the railroad. Yeah. Right? Oh, but, yeah. yeah. The, that's the railroad. The railroad. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's a cloudy, rainy day in Arizona. Beat the drum slowly. Play the fife lowly. Play the dead march. As you carry me along, take cranes to the green valley. A uh, hundred cranes. And lay the Going that way. <laughs> I'm going to try and focus on some. Really can't tell if I got them in this shot. There's more coming. And there's more that have already been by. Yeah, 
beautiful. There's more coming, look at this. Yeah. Amazing. like we're standing under a highway of cranes. Yeah, it's amazing. There's like six flights of them there. And it's so cool. And there's more. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, we're used to seeing these back in Illinois. You'd see 10. Maybe 20. 20 was like, oh my god, look at all the cranes. Yeah. We're looking at a hundred or more. Oh, a thousand. A thousand? There's a hundred right there. Oh my gosh. And more coming. Yeah. Wonder where they're all going? To that reserve that we did a video about. In Texas? Yeah. We'll put a link to that in the description. We will put a link to that. <laughs> this is amazing. For I'm a young cowboy, I know I've done.